welcome back everybody to our energy tips for week number three in 2020 that is the 12th till the 18th of January yes aren't you happy to have gotten through this last week yes this was a very exhausting week uh, also very energizing I don't know if you felt this but most of this deep, deep inner stuff that was coming forward here in this last week had to do with our sense of security and recognizing that we might have some blind spots here. You know, that is, it might be a false sense of security. All these things that we are relying on or that we are taking for granted were kind of shaken up and uh, for many of us in a very emotional way, uh, some of us also in a very physical way. So if you guys are a little sickish or you f question whether you're sick or not, understand that it's probably a combination. All right, so when your emotions go really low, then your physical immune system goes low and with it then your energetic immune system. So it's it goes hand in hand. The way out, of course, you know, is to, you know, really feel into what our true needs are what our true desires are you know for uh, you know being in this present moment okay not uh, so much the coping I mean sometimes we do need to cope but if you feel like you have to go and sleep or take a nap or uh, you know you need something like um, a piece of chocolate or, uh, you know, pizza or whatever to ground yourself or you need to take a time out from whatever it is that keeps you so busy and you need to go out and just be for a moment, you know, go uh, do a walk in the woods or go to the beach or um, take a bath or swim and experience yourself again in your present, all right, then you'll notice that this isn't checking out all right if you can stay awake with this and do this because this is something that helps your energy to rebalance to regain your stance to ground yourself and to center yourself this time spent and this space that you've opened up for yourself to re return or you know arrive in the present moment is what helps you to get past all this um, ego 3d-ness trigger happiness okay so trigger happiness was uh, the keyword of this last week where everything was extremely sort of um, short fused lots of reactivity lots of fears you know uh, what this might bring for us as humans collectively but also for us individually and uh, you know it, it put us into a place where uh, we might have felt regrets or where we've started to judge ourselves again. Why didn't I see this earlier? Or what are the consequences of all this, uh, you know, sort of staying asleep? Okay, this is a temptation here that you need to withstand, guys. We just talked about this in the Truth Talk, uh, wokeness and awakeness and the discernment of truth. You know, you can't judge yourself for being asleep. The moment you get pulled into, you know, why was I asleep? Why didn't I see this earlier? Blah, blah, blah. You know, it, you are already on your way to a sleepness again. It is the resistance, okay, to, you know, what it is that you are experiencing. The judgment of that and the reactivity to it that bind your energy, that make you unfree. And why do we resist truth in the first place? Place Well, this is, you know, the, the question that we have to work through. It is the same reason why we don't change. If you think about it, a lot of your regrets and a lot of your fears of the future, they have to do with the things that we don't do, that we don't say, with the things that stay you know, unexpressed. And this is something that I want you to tune into a little more with Simply Truth, as I call this energy tip recording here this week for the energies that are coming in next week. All right, it's very, very important 
that you understand what it is that keeps you frozen or that keeps you in this passive place of enabling, tolerating, um, accepting toxicity in your life or things that are not growth promoting, things that are pain invoking, things that need to be coped with, things that you need to resist. And uh, you know this, guys. I mean, this is the, 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 the ego's prerogative is to avoid pain and seek pleasure, you know, as in coping, trying to get through. Then this is where awakeness training needs to come in. We need to remember that we are more than just sort of instant gratification and trying to get through things. This puts us in a place of, of, of just being a bystander in our life. This puts us in a place of powerlessness because uh, life then is just happening to us and we are no longer in a place that we can choose. So, you know, in, in your truth training then, you know, you got to recognize that you are up against a bunch of neurotransmitter and neural pathways and psychological, emotional and behavioral habits and patterns. And most of these guys were conditioned into you. This is where this, this collective matrix or collective gaslighting comes in, all right? So you think that, you know, because 98% of the people around you are doing it, well, it's got to be right, right? Because, you know, it gives you uh, maybe validation or uh, social approval. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. So when we awake, all right, we recognize that uh, even though things are real and uh, 3D-ness is very real, it's very solid, it has a direct effect on your body, on your emotions and on your thoughts, but it isn't always true. It isn't until we are fully aware, and this is the present moment awareness, that we are witnessing all of our experiences and the observer in us, which is often you know, uh, still just the mind, okay, we're witnessing all of this from a perspective that allows us to choose how we want to see things. And, you know, the, the thing that we are all up against and what pulls us into our sleepness and therefore into not doing the things that would be good for us or that we truly want or that we truly desire is another uh, way our ego uh, uh, filters information and that is that it, it, it tends to internalize successes so of course everything that is good about you you know is yours that is you know me 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 but everything that is bad it tends to externalize it and this is uh, really on the deeper level what awakeness helps us to discern we begin to realize how much of of all this pain and all the suffering and victimhood and shame and guilt and anger and all these things that we don't want to feel, how we externalize them, how we have basically given away our power to all these outer things that we are resisting, be it politics, be it, um, you know, uh, environmental issues, be it our partners, be it our children, be it our money situation, be it our our race or our gender or whatever it is that we recognize that we are resisting is what we have in our sleep state externalized our power to. So learning what is true, reclaiming this freedom to choose has to happen through recognizing that the power to make choices that the that the the power of choice is actually in me so we have to find ways to neutralize our reactivity and stay there long enough in this present moment awareness to recognize that i can choose how i want to see this i can choose if i see you know say my my financial lack as, uh, you know, sort of a victimization or the fault of others or, you know, uh, some kind of external reason. Or I can also see it as me working on my abundance 
And now seeing the glass half full instead of half empty, and even beyond that, not seeing it as good or bad at all, just seeing it as a reflection of where my energy is at. And this is why, you know, this whole truth training is so essential for us to deal with these outer things that are coming in here more and more aware to us how much untruth there is in our societies, in our daily lives, how many blind spots we really have and how our ego plays into this by filtering the information, by filtering reality and obviously creating some kind of of virtual reality in us. So the first step of this is like really life-changing transformation from a sleep into an awake state, which then, you know, allows us to discern truth, is by becoming aware that by resisting and externalizing our power, in other words, by not taking full responsibility for what is going on in our life and for, you know, sort of not wanting to be accountable for any of this, all right, we are giving away our power. This is just really needs to sink in, okay? So what is holding us back from doing that? That's our conditioning. Our conditioning is like, oh, you can't make mistakes. Oh, you can't be vulnerable. Oh, you, you can't uh, look bad in front of others. Oh, you can't uh, tell truth, you know, because uh, then you might hurt other people's feelings. Oh, you can't do this or you can't do that. You can't feel that way. That's a bad feeling. That's a negative thing. You can't eat meat. You can't, I mean, it, it's never ending, guys. And this is why we don't do the things that we want to do. This is what is holding us back from happiness and, you know, ultimately also fulfillment. So you've got to recognize, and this is something that is happening right now, that whenever you get pulled into this view of all or nothing, that you are fully asleep. Because all or nothing is a function of the ego. It plays directly into the fear of death, the fear of loss. And therefore, you know, binds you to your ego reactivity and takes away your power to choose, to choose what you want to do. All right? And um, on a deeper level, you know, it's nothing really but an idealization of your own ego. It's, uh, you know, basically your ego saying it knows best, you know, sort of mama knows best, all right, uh, on a spiritual level. Um, it's uh, denying divine crea creation, really, because the ego, uh, and, and this happens subconsciously in us, but it puts itself over God, it puts itself over creation and says, no, 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 you know, this is uh, not the way it is. It's only the way, you know, I see it. And uh, ultimately, uh, that's then when we lose this connection. And this, this connection that we are all sort of craving for, this, this spiritual instinct that we all have, all right, this is something that plays a major, major role in our awakening process. That's why it's often called spiritual awakening or spiritual emergence. This does not mean that you have to, you know, pack up your things and go to an ashram or become part of a church or anything. Spiritual awakening really means that you awaken up to the fact that there is a higher consciousness in you, okay? And how do you know that you have a higher consciousness in you? Because that part of you can actually witness all the other parts of you. That's the part that allows me to talk to you about ego. That's the part that allows me to observe thoughts and energies and emotions and even physical processes in me and you all right so this is the part that gives us back or can give us back the power the power to choose the freedom to choose and the power to know truth and what is truth really in essence truth is something that has to do with what promotes this life form, okay? I'm, I'm saying this 
uh, in a little mechanical way here, but truth is everything that is basically inviting and promoting life, light, love, okay? It's something that supports this sentient divine life force in me, okay? And it's the opposite of toxicity, okay? Toxicity is everything that prevents me from feeling, seeing, acting upon truth, acting upon things that are promoting for my life, that are uh, promoting, uh, you know, growth uh, and creation, all right? Toxicity is something that ultimately leads to the death of my, you know, beingness here, my species or my life force. And this is what we really need to let sink in. This is simply truth, guys. Every kind of toxicity that we allow or tolerate or accept as norm in our life is ultimately harmful for ourselves and others and leads to the degradation of our life force, leads to this deep, dark night of the soul where we can no longer feel the connection to God, creation, source, whatever you want to call it, because what it is that you are engaging in is cutting you off from life force. That's how simple that is. Even by passivity, even by, you know, letting it just happen, by seeing yourself as a victim, by seeing yourself as a bystander in your life, somebody who life is happening to. Now, there is uh, an advanced form of asleepness, and that is where we are fixated on doing and improving and not wanting to feel uh, this dark night of the soul. We don't want to feel this way. We resist it, and we seek we seek, we want to have more, we want this to become a better body, we want this to become a better emotion, we want this to become a better life, we want to have a better relationship, we want to make our partner um, uh, become different, we want to make our children become better, we want to make our job uh, be better and have more money and all that. That's an advanced form of asleepness, guys, because we are still seeking something, we're still externalizing something and for as long as we are choosing to fixate on that, for as long as we are choosing to, to energize this with our attention, all right, we are still asleep, still caught in our ego, if you will. We're still energizing life-degrading things in our life. And this is sometimes very difficult to wrap our mind around because the mind says, well, how can be improving this and do and and, and fighting and, and seeking this and, and and trying harder and working hard on being awake? Yeah, how can this be toxic? Oh, I tell you why. And I, first, I'm going to tell you how you can feel this by never feeling good enough. And it has nothing to do with what you do, guys. This has only something to do with your intention. The, where this is coming from, why you are doing this. Okay, you're doing this to avoid feeling something or, or to avoid or to resist pain or suffering or fear. And through your intention, without you being aware of it, this is the blind spot, okay? You're feeding your inner resistance and you're externalizing again. So yes, Breaking through this pattern, this habit of perfectionism and trying harder and doing more and, and, and feeling entitled and blaming, you know, out, outer circumstances, situations or people or partner, you know, and, and feeling that we deserve better. All these are ego mechanisms that bind you to the uh, untruths that bind you to falsehoods, to false sense of security, to false sense of growth, to a false sense of yourself. 
and they promote you questioning yourself, you judging yourself, you questioning your reality, never truly knowing, you know, if this is true or not, and often, you know, leading to a deep form of anxiety. Because deep down you cannot trust if what you're experiencing is true. And this is the spiritual instinct in you, you know, that uh, somehow bleeds through. And here I want to remind everybody that this isn't about, you know, pointing out your flaws or what you're doing wrong. This is truth is about seeing it for what it is and dealing with it. Feel into this, you know, see this as a learning experience, you know. See this as something where you can recognize better what triggers you, what pulls you, what fixates you, what tempts you into your ego's ivory tower, what you resist, okay, what your secret payoff is in doing this, okay, there is, if you continue to invest into toxicity, you know, by choosing to be asleep, or by resisting truth, or by, you know, simply trying to uh, to make it go away through addictions or gratifications or, you know, feeling better about your ego, all right, there's got to be, you know, something in you, you know, that ego part in you that gets something out of it. So understand that when you go into this, or when you go through this dark night of your soul, that what is happening there is actually a a death of your ego process. It is the first onset of waking up. And all you need to do is recognize it as such and stay present. And, you know, really let this sink in, breeze through. You're going to survive this, guys. You, you're surviving and you're not going to die. Your ego is dying. Your sleepiness is going away. You know, it's this moment when you wake up from having a good dream and you kind of want to, you want the dream to continue. Do you know this feeling? You know, and you're trying to make yourself dream it again. Okay, that's what this is. Okay. It is only, you know, your fear or your resistance to truth, you know, to this awakened state that pulls you back into this. So that's why it's so important to understand or to, it's not an understanding intellectually, but to, to know when you're awakened. How do you do this? Awakeness training, you know, is uh, something that we do with mindfulness. You know, we, we um, on, on purpose, slow down. We, we uh, create restraints, you know, things such as um, fasting or refraining from this gratification that you've already identified that is pulling you into your sleep state, you know, all your addictions, you know, the ones that you're aware of and the ones that you're unaware of. Everything that, that leads to you either avoiding pain or seeking pleasure, those are, you know, the, the three d temptations, the temptations of the flesh and if you are uh, if you were raised religiously it's like yes it's those deadly sins okay because they pull you into your sleep state okay so that's the awakeness training is to to really allow yourself to become aware of this and then truth training the way you learn to discern all this has to do with practicing this you know has to do with uh, making this effort and having this uh, in intensive attention to you know like where your energy is at and then comes the embodiment training and then later comes the 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 manifestation the choice training but the point that i'm trying to make here and why this is such a big deal here in these weeks is that you have to realize that when you're asleep your your energy is literally externalized it's given away its power to something else and i don't want to uh, you know, fill this up with uh, whatever sort of hidden enemy dark forces or whatever, but, y you know, your energy is, uh, uh, without you being aware of it, okay, feeding something else. And, 
you know, awakeness is basically reclaiming this back, internalizing it again. And then, you know, as you practice to stay awake and to be in your present moment awareness and to be okay with letting go of some of your ego stuff and, you know, going into a sort of a more minimalism, you know, and, and you know, asking yourself about your true values, your true needs and, and what is truly important to you, what truly matters to you, you know, when you begin to focus on the essential things, you know, things that that help you to increase your life force, that help you to feel more powerful and more awake, all right, then comes another stage and that is when all this wants to come into expression, when you want to bring this back out into the external, but not as part of your dependency or your externalization, but as part as you full awareness that this is what you came here for. This is then what I call soulfulness and gracefulness. When you realize that that which you have become is what needs to come into an expression, what is your, you know, sort of your sole task here, okay, that makes you feel fulfilled. So fulfillment then comes through not just sort of pulling it in and keeping it inside, but by bringing it back out, your version of divine creation, your rendering of soulfulness. And then you realize that this isn't about becoming better, you know, trying harder. This is about just really loving what you are and doing what you love. It's the essential. So this then, you know, leads to a whole sort of new set of of paradigms in your life. And I just want to zoom through this here real quick for you. This from external to internal to external again. All right, how we can actually become the highest expression of who we are. You know, the only commitment, the only promise that we ever need to fulfill in order to feel fulfilled. Right, the first thing is to ask yourself if this is a resistance, okay, what you are not doing or what you, your energy is directed at, and does this need to be somehow regulated? Do you need to learn to go into non-reaction, you know, fear of missing out or the, the need to control or, you know, the, the, the need to be better, the seeking, the fixation, okay? So the, number one is letting go of your fixations. Number two is really learning to accept all your feelings, sensations, emotions, and thoughts as something, you know, that is a, a sort of part of your humanness and also other people's humanness. So there's a form of, of uh, social uh, intelligence, social empathy that needs to be formed within us, you know, where, you know, we no longer see ourselves as, uh, you know, special or entitled or, you know, any kind of elevation because the, as we are projecting this out, as, especially as energetically sensitives, we also absorbing a lot of that uh, collective ego projection back in. <coughs> Number three is this liberation from, you know, our conditioning from all this matrix programming, you know, and finding our own values, finding our own truth, finding what is essential to us, what matters to us, what defines us without identifying with all these uh, outer, uh, you know, values, with the, these, the, you know, political correctness and all the things I talked about here in the truth talk about wokeness, all right? Whether, you know, you like uh, eating meat or whether you like meditating or whether you uh, like having um, uh, kids or a relationship or not, all these things, they need to go through your own truth detector, through your own heart's navigator, all right? And that's then, you know, what leads you to, to knowing your own truth, okay? To knowing what is essential to yourself. 
Number four then is to give up this need to have this outer validation, okay? This, this you know, it, 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 you fixating on, on what the world gives back to you also in regards to, you know, like entitlement and deservingness and so forth, again, externalizes your energy. So you, you got to let go from that. And, and when you focus on the things that are most essential for you, that really matter to you, you recognize that any kind of validation that comes from the outside isn't really that fulfilling anyway. Do you know what I mean? It's like when people, oh, you're so cool, or you're so, and you're like, uh, well, you know, I'm just like everybody else, you know, trying to be the best I can. But as an awake soul, you know, I see myself in this fully responsible state, you know, where I have no problems with showing up the best I can and taking, you know, making corrections, you know, when... I don't, and making amends sometimes, and communicating this with others. So this then leads to number five, namely our our emotional literacy, our emotional um, uh, 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 translation ability, you know, uh, with others, you know, and connecting with our own emotions and feelings and that of others, and learning how to express this. This is very important here for this next week, because if we are not bringing this outward, all right, then uh, there, there always uh, will be sort of a, a barrier between us and others. So this starts with sharing. And even if you feel like you don't know these kind of people that you can talk with on this level, it's not needed, guys. You can go out and, you know, brush horses or walk dogs or, you know, plant um, flowers in some kind of, yeah, I don't know, uh, public uh, parks or whatever. And, and communicate and share and, you know, uh, bring things uh, in, uh, in, in the outward world that way. You can, you know, start volunteering somewhere. You can start, you know, maybe your own discussion or meditation group, nonprofit. It doesn't actually matter. It, you just have to love what you are doing. And as you do what you love, you are bringing yourself into this highest expression. And then number six is to really get a, a good grip on this negative inner communication. Also your negative outer communication. But I really want to point your guys' attention to how this toxic inner communication um, is really pulling you into your sleep state over and over again. I mentioned this earlier, this, this constant questioning and doubting yourself and um, hypervigilance and turning every stone and, you know, this, this constant fear of making mistakes um, is more toxic than most other things in your life, all right? It creates a continual environment and conditions for negativity in you that is so easy to trigger, you know, by other people's negativity. So when you complain about talking to other people and say, oh, they're so negative, you know, it's because your own negativity easily gets triggered, okay? But what it tells you is that you need to work on your inner negativity, not, you know, go away from these people. I mean, sometimes this, it can mean that too. But, you know, the moment you allow yourself to identify with negativity or to latch on to negativity, it's yours. Now it's yours, you know. And most of you have a, a vocabulary with yourself that is outright degrading to yourself. Here in the Heart Warrior training, this is a big part of what we do is helping people to become aware of this. You can train yourself, but it's all these blind spots, right, where we don't even recognize, you know, the toxicity because we've been so conditioned to it. And then number seven is to form resilience, to understand that learning and even you know, pain and, you know, going through things is what creates more power, is what gives you more life force, is what makes you happier because you feel more adequate. So instead of avoiding 
learning experience instead of avoiding to go through things okay or warding things off you know use the six second rule get breathe through it sit through it guys you're going to survive it and it's going to make you feel more resilient and it gives you more trust in yourself that you can handle things yes it sucks sometimes but you're not going to die allow yourself to form this resilience all right and and really be truthful with yourself there you know am i avoiding to deal with something if you continue to avoid dealing with things you're never going to feel good enough that's the simplicity of that and then last but not least stop being so serious about yourself and your own you know problems and your own um stuff all right uh, you know yeah humor helps but you know what some humor is actually uh, pretty toxic too you know it helps it to release energies a little bit it's just like yelling at somebody it helps you to release your anger but it's not necessarily the the antidote to your own seriousness the seriousness is a disease of your ego all right instead just just allow yourself to live allow yourself to be explore make mistakes embrace learning go out look at nature how nature does it what does evolution even mean okay stay awake but don't be you know pulled into this hyperactivism or toxic passivity either stay in balance so seriousness always creates this urgency and this like all or nothing perfectionism and idealization all ego stuff no just understand that life needs to be lived and what greater regret can we have than on our deathbed wishing that we would have been more awake that we would have lived our life more consciously guys focus on the essential on what you can change and what you you know just drop all the stuff that you can't change investigate you know if you actually have a choice and uh, what you need to do in order to get your choice back the power of choice back what needs your attention what you need to deal with listen to your inner feelings make your heart you know your sort of unified heart mind your navigator and be okay with making a fool of yourself be okay with embarrassing yourself be okay with this i shared this on other occasion probably the most transformative advice that i've ever received is from my good friend bernard and i don't know how old i was i was 17 or 18 or maybe 19 i don't remember exactly and he said a day lived without at least having made fool a fool out of yourself once a day is a wasted day so with this i'm going to just give you very short um, energy tips here going through all these different layers of being because uh, I, today i really wanted to to create the larger picture and then um, as i you know pull this apart we can sometimes lose this so all these eight different ways uh, you know how you can stay awake how you can regain the the power of choice through your awakeness all right all this is just there to for you to find more fulfillment in life because right now with all this uncertainty that is going on it becomes more and more important to stay in truth to discern truths and recognize where you are resisting truth remember resisting truth is sort of equal toxicity it means that you would not know if the, something was harmful to you so chakra wise first and sixth chakra very very strong pressure in your temples around your eyes headaches um, but also issues uh, with your leg with legs with your hips with your joints um, you know all the things that have to do with this uh, fundamental willingness to see truth and resistance always creates issues and skeletal 
and joint in the skeletal and joint region. The second aspect here in this next week is the second and your fifth chakra. And this has to do with how you see yourself, how you see yourself in this world and how you express yourself in this world. And guys, there's a lot of people with uh, digestive issues right now, um, um, but also throat and uh, sinus issues. Okay, that's second and fifth chakra. Okay, so uh, any kind of of chronic chronicness all right is is going to flare up here in these days you know because it's all about the vps and where we don't change all right and what we don't do and uh you know what we don't say you know the things that create this this uh, toxicity through regrets and passivity in us all right you know a statistic sh clearly shows that only that we only follow through with 8% of all the intentions that we ever have. 8%. So up those 8%. Make this more conscious. Make your intention more conscious in your entire 3D-ness, in your physical 3D. Take a good inventory and then focus on simplicity. Focus on common sense, guys. If you don't have enough money to pay your bills, well, then you're going to have to go do a job. And it, I don't care if the job is a spiritual job or not. You're going to have to be able to, to, you know, deliver, you know, a real sense of security through knowing what you can do, you know, and through fulfilling your physical 3D needs. Emotionally, take a good inventory of your negativity because, you know, most of, of what you've taken on as, uh, you know, this or what, what comes to you in form of this inner negativity that is currently trying to latch on to you, which is pulling you into the dark night of the soul, has to do with what has been communicated to you all along, what you have been conditioned with. All right. So allow, you know, allow your feelings, you know, and uh, try to catch these unconscious negative inner uh, negativity you know this toxicity within yourself mentally same thing false belief false sense of security assumptions you know it's it's all about mind shifting right now you know and recognizing how much of your uh, reality or perceived reality was actually filtered through your ego mind okay and with it also the the specialness that comes with uh, the the doing this you know oh this is uh you know cool what i'm doing Socially, in your relationships, guys, uh, huge, huge, big changes are happening here in our relationship lives. And this is because we want um, more connection. We want more truth. We want more integrity. We want more awakeness in our relationships. But, yes, there are all these patterns and habits and behaviors from the past that we have enabled or that we have tolerated. And, and just because you are waking up, Right now, it doesn't mean that your partner is waking up in the same way. So you got to give them leeway. You could, this needs to be practiced. To, to this needs to be communicated. Okay, so you can't just expect, you know, your your partner to suddenly awake with you, because it's not how this goes. The freedom to choose also applies to your partner. And if anything, the question, you know, look. I didn't see this before and now I'm seeing this and you know perhaps even doing amends that always helps it's, it's trust provoking right when you try to negotiate something with your partner but to say this and to say you know this is how I would like to have this from now on is this okay for you you know you don't have to convince the other person of truth you just got to speak from your own heart and speak within your own truth and then you'll have to wait and see. You'll have to experience. You'll have to go through it. You have to be open to experience how things are going to unfold, how they unravel without the fear that you don't like it or without uh, resisting, you know, some of these truths that come with this. Spiritually, you know, it's all about remembering, you know, what... What makes you, you, but in a true self way, you know? And if you forget it, or if you have never really experienced, you know, the, the you, the soul you in you, okay? Then go out in nature, go hug trees, go talk to plants, talk to animals, 
This is the easiest and cheapest way for you to tune back in what you are made of. The stuff that you are made of is the same stuff that nature is made of. You are part of nature. It's the easiest way, not just for clearing, also to stimulate your spiritual instinct and your spiritual emotions to become aware to you because those are the ones that can make you awake. And then energetically, you know, because we're dealing with patterns and habits and uh, newer pathways, you're going to have to really work on this intentive attention, okay, daily discipline. And sometimes, you know, I've mentioned this on other occasion, it's it's best to to restrain yourself by by applying this backward rule that I that I mentioned a few times. You know, if your ego says, yeah, 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 you know, just do the opposite, just for the heck of it, just for weaning yourself off from your ego gratification. Okay, just try it. All right. I know some of you guys have done this. You've done an extra fast, an extra difficult fast, or you know, just don't get pulled into the specialness of this. All right, you don't even need to share this. You know the Staying silent for three days. I don't even know if I could do this. I think I'm going to challenge myself with this. So, yes, go into this life embracing and learn and learning and growth promoting attitude with yourself. All right. Ignore all the stuff that is going on in the collective right now. You can read the headlines, you know, but when it, if, if there was a true soul meter that I could put on, on what is going on out there, all right, in media and then even movies and shows and so forth, the, this whole wokeness movement, guys, those are all just, you know, ways to pull us back into sleepness and collective negativity, right? Instead, focus on weaning yourself off from your ego. Focus on the essential. Focus on simply truth. Okay, thank you for your support, guys. Love you. See you next week. Bye-bye.